Hi there everyone, Lars again, from Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast by novice writers for novice writers, but also a YouTube channel for novice writers by novice writers. I am keeping my promise by offering up more content. And for this video, I'm going to impart some writing and critique wisdom gleaned from this winter season's Netflix anime shows. It should come as no surprise to you that we in the harem like to reference more than just books and bad fan fictions when it, when it comes to discussing writing. That's because we feel that all stories, despite their medium, can be insightful and helpful to us as budding authors. Furthermore, when I hear people say that anime can tell stories better than anyone else or do things that others can't, it rubs me the wrong way. I contend that if you put your mind to it and work at it, you can be just as expressive, in-depth, or wacky in telling your story as any anime ever could. So I'm going to give you some writing advice from anime so I can prove my point. And with that being said, recently Netflix gave us a wide variety of examples of anime storytelling, from bad to good to great and a handful of other shows. For this video, I will talk about four shows that premiered during the winter season and what we can learn from them. This will contain some minor spoilers, so caution ahead. The shows I will sum up as fast as Indigo Montoya tried to explain the plot of Princess Bride will be Aiko, Children of the Whales, Be the Beginning, and Violet Evergarden. Starting off with Aiko, this wasted potential of a train wreck, follows a young girl, Aiko, who is a clone made up of some impressive artificial flesh that you realize pretty quick is made up of the same microbots from Big Hero 6, basically. However, a sample of this flesh went rogue and started consuming Japan, but it was nice enough about it to just stick to one river. Scientists, racked with guilt and the prospects of glorious redemption for playing God, decide that they will magically defeat the microbot flesh stuff by re reuniting Aiko with her real self, and with the help of teenage mercenaries called Divers. The premise of this story, if you care to watch this uninspired show, is actually fascinating. But the storytelling is constantly obstructed by the most foreseeable twists and reveals, a very creepy and angsty love triangle, teenagers being extremely stupid, and everyone going full-blown anime with crazy scientists, naked 16-year-old clones, mind control, and people shouting stuff they never would in real life. And remember what I just said about the microbots? That is the most inventive name for anything in this whole series. The show doesn't even try to be smart, not once! This is an example of a great concept terribly executed. As a writer, the advice that we can glean from Aiko is this. Once you have found that perfect, awesome concept or story that you want to tell everyone about, sit down and plot it how it will pan out. Doesn't mean you have to be an architect writer, but you need to give your thought more thought. Uh, just because you have a great idea doesn't mean it will always translate over into a very great story. So ask yourself, do these names sound good? For instance, is this character blander than watching paint dry? Is this maybe too obvious? After that, get some second opinions. Networking is amazing. Just don't stop the creative process right at the good idea part. You still have a long way to go. Next, we have The Children of the Whales. This is Attack on Titan for people who like magic, but can't stand angst, torturing yourself, or Aaron Yeager. Seriously, this show is cute. But don't get attached to the cast, because they drop like flies. So within the show, you have a ship full of people who can use magic at the cost of their lives, who are being chased across a vast ocean of sand by an empire hell-bent on controlling their magic and also dominating people's emotions. Chakuro, one of the main characters, plays as the ship's historian and catalogs everything that happens after he discovers this girl, Likos, who is quite blatantly the future love interest from the get-go by the virtue of a cute otter shipping them in the very first episode and her attempt to murder Chakuro. That's called true love, people! So after he finds Likos on another ship that kind of resembles their own, everything goes to hell in a hen basket. The magic users on the ship call this ship the Mud Whale, and they have to stave off attack after attack from the Empire. And we get to see how murder has a profound impact on a society that has been at peace for nearly a hundred years. It's pretty interesting to watch, and I really do like the characters, but it's not a perfect show. 
Children of the Wells is world building done totally wrong. Oddly enough, the style that it employs does work for the show because Chakuro must explain everything to people who have not kept even their own history for nearly a century. Any information that has been passed down has been done so orally and is jealously guarded. So he is basically explaining everything to you because you won't learn it from anywhere else, or from anyone else for that matter. While this works for the show, you as a writer kind of don't have that luxury. You can't just sit down and for an entire chapter world build. It's boring for most readers and stalls the narrative more than LA traffic does. Your world building needs to incorp needs to be incorporated throughout the entire story as people live their lives. And as a historian myself, I do love providing context and world building tidbits, but I have come to see for myself in my own writing that I'm not writing a textbook here. I'm writing a story. So my advice based off of this show is world building is really good when blended as a part of show and tell. There are times when you do need to sit down and explain things, but for the most part, you must show your world in action and let the clues and your descriptions in the action flesh out the brief explanations that you give. However, too much show and not enough tell will also cause you to lose readers. So you need to figure out how best to balance these different elements. And that does range from story to story. Next, we have Be the Beginning. This show I can only best describe as a supernatural political thriller mystery. And yes, it is as cool as that sounds. This show follows a retired investigator uh, nicknamed Genny, who works with a crazy team of anime CSI folk as they hunt down a murderer by the name of Killer B. And they delve into a series of bizarre, sickening murders and attempted murders on political targets. In the process, Genny discovers that the twisted plots pull in all these different elements, such as rogue black op agents, a man who's been recruiting serial killers to do his dirty work, and a plot to genetically engineer gods. And all of this leads to a fantastic standoff between the investigator and a real monster in a battle of wits and psychology. I would honestly call this one of the best anime Netflix has premiered, except that it couldn't help but go full-blown anime! With such a dark, intellectually challenging, and fast-paced series, there are a number of scenes and even a whole episode that just do not fit. It was like the writers remembered from time to time that they were making an anime, and so they had to insert an angsty character and some generic anime trope-filled scenes um, about kids making stupid vague promises of love to each other, making totally horrible decisions that anyone with half a brain cell could figure out that was just stupid, and then some. And why do we have this guy right here? Why do we have B... Um, trying to rival Kirito as the angsty saver for reasons? Yeah, it. this right here just totally derails part of the show when the show was going so strong. The advice I can give you from Be the Beginning is that you should always stick to the tone and themes of your story. Because it can be extremely jarring when you just pull a complete 180 and just go in a different direction. I will say, sometimes it can work out to totally shift the tone and pace of your of your story if you're going for a very jarring effect, and normally that's when you have a very special kind of reveal uh, for what's really been going on, or for some sort of romantic arc, something like that. So I will give it that sometimes a change is merited, but it shouldn't be done all too often, and when you do it, it has to be very well set up. Otherwise, it's just going to be like pulling out the rails from underneath a speeding train. <laughs> Not very good. Consistency is key in writing. And for our fourth example, we have the amazing show Violet Evergarden. This gorgeously made series depicts the life of a scarred veteran, Violet, who after the anime version of World War I has nowhere to go and has lost the one man in her life that gave her any direction and purpose. A retired lieutenant and friend to Violet's major takes her in and gives her a job in his postal company as an auto memories doll, or as we would call them, an a manuus? Yeah, an a manuus. Yeah, better stick with auto memories doll. Sounds much better. In her new profession, Violet sets out to do her best to help people communicate their deepest thoughts and feelings to others. 
While she does this, she seeks the meaning of the words, I love you. This is a touching tale, and as someone who rarely gets emotional to anything, this show did pull my heartstrings and did make me cry a few times. This is... So, I really have to give that show some major props. It is a beautiful story of how we communicate, about how we move on, and discovering that there are worlds of complexity built into those three simple words. I love you. My advice for you, coming from this series is that, as writers, we really have to capture the magic of communication. Communication is key to conveying your story to your readers, to your whole audience. And it can be very difficult and very daunting to write good dialogue. Because many times we feel like it has to be contrived. Oftentimes it also feels organic. And sometimes when you're reading through, you're like, this is just so stupid. However, the key to it is this. You have to focus on the meaning of what your characters are trying to convey. We don't just talk with words. We don't just vomit out a bunch of stuff. We talk about memories. We convey ideals, emotions, thoughts, these things which are so nebulous. We try to pull them on in and embody them in words. And as you write your conversations within your narratives, you have to think about what kind of emotions they're trying to convey, their memories, their ideals, their thoughts. Doing this will help make your conversations feel much more alive. And once you get the flow going, let the conversation just flow. See where it takes you. Let there be changes in topics. Uh, let people kind of run on for a little bit, but definitely don't let them run on for too long. And once again, this is a conversation, not a soapboxing uh, moment. Um, let your, it does take a lot of work to get your conversations to feel alive, but the work is so totally worth it. For myself, one of the things that kept me from writing for so long until Camille challenged me to write my first book, The Legend of the Ten Lords, um, the big thing that held me back was dialogue. I felt I couldn't do it, and it did take me a while to figure it out. And so going from my own experience, but especially also from Violet Evergarden, think about the feelings and the ideals that your characters are trying to convey through their words and embody that in the conversations. And if you do that, you can do some amazing things with your dialogue. So those are my summaries and my thoughts and some advice from on what we can glean from these Netflix shows from Ico, Children of the Whales, Be the Beginning, and Violet Evergarden. Like I said, pulling from all forms of media helps us make helps to make us better writers. So those are my summaries, thoughts on, and advice from the Netflix shows. Ico, Children of the Whales, Be the Beginning, and Violet Evergarden. Like I said, pulling from all forms of media helps to make us better writers. You can do just as well or even better than an anime if you put your mind to it. There's no one medium that is superior to another. Well done storytelling is universal. Um, well, it's universal in theory. You guys are going to be the ones to prove that my theory is correct. I have faith in all of you. So, go forth and do. And in the meantime, uh, check out some more of our episodes, both here on the channel and also on our podcast at Camille's Harem, found on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play. And if you want to be kept uh, in the loop for all of our future content on our YouTube channel, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you will be notified for all of our future content. As I've stated in, pre in my previous videos, we will be uh, flooding our channel with more stuff coming up this summer. So we want you to be kept in tune for that because we want to help inspire you to be better writers. And when you're not watching or listening to us, you can also uh, check us out on Tumblr, Pinterest, and on uh, our Reddit page, where we will be having more discussions and where we can help you network with other novice writers. Once again, working together is kind of what helps motivate us and inspire us to do better with our, with our books, with our stories. And finally, send us links, please, to your favorite terrible fan fictions that are out there, so that way we can turn them into epic readings for your enjoyment. Uh, you can do that by sending us the link um, through Twitter at Camille's Harem. And that is all for now. So, juice!